Welcome to a world full of goblins and scary things. Nah, I'm just kidding. Hey, I know. I'm not really telling you the truth. Welcome to a fun-filled day in math video land. Okay, is that more truthful? You know, if I haven't told you this, let me make sure that I'm clear. I love math. Math is happening. Let me go ahead and take care of this here. Move this out of the way. Do this and do that. And welcome to a slideshow. Uh-oh. It's just kind of weird looking. I don't think it's supposed to look like that. There we go. I was looking for my little thing here. See? So, you guys, this is your end of Module 1 Assessment Review Part 1. I know that you knew that because you read it along with me. I bet you did. Hey! Welcome. It's been a while for another video. Let me see here. Could I stress enough that this video and the videos to follow will be probably some of the most important kind of content you're going to get? Because basically, just between you and me, I'm actually reviewing pretty much the assessment that you're going to face. I know this stuff is really, really difficult. But I know that if you really stay focused and if you really pay attention and come to school on Tuesday, remember you have Monday off, you will ask some questions about what maybe gave you difficulty so that you guys will do well. Anyway, here's the first question. It says here, it says the following equations involve different quantities and use different operations, yet produce the same result. Use a place value mat and words to explain why this is true. Okay, well first we need to kind of understand the directions here. So we have two different equations here, as you can see. They're different quantities. When they start off with, this one here starts off with 164,500. And then this one here starts off with one and 645 thousandths. But if you look at the answer, look at, they have the same result. This one here is 16,450. This one over here says 16,450. Now, these are true, so please, this is not a trick question. I know what you're thinking. Mr. War is trying to trick us. Let's not fall for it, guys. Come on. Now, really, it is true. They do equal 16,450. So the question is, why? Now, the mega, mega problem here. So I'm just going to slide down my shade here. Let the sun shine in. I'm going to move this out of my way. And then quickly look at this. And, of course, there are certain things I will be doing during the video, which, of course, I know that you guys are really good. You're going to be focused, and you'll know what's going on, and you'll know what to do with that right there. Okay, sorry, it's gone. So, basically, the first thing I guess we should do is determine where we're going to put our decimal point, because it does say use a place value mat. Therefore, um, we should probably put our place values in, so that way we can tell. So, let me see here. I have 164,000, so I'm just going to do it reverse like this. Zero, zero, five, four, six, one. I love smart software. It makes things so easy. So therefore, this is going to be the ones. That means it's going to be the tens. This is going to be the hundreds. This is going to be the thousands. Okay, I'm just abbreviating everything. This is going to be the, did I do this right? Ones, tens, hundreds, thousands. That's right, ten thousands. I'm just actually going to just put a ten here. Ooh, very sneaky, Mr. Wara. I like that strategy. I think I'll use it next time on my smart video. And I'll say, okay, that's fine. Just remember, it's not copyright. You are allowed to use that. That intellectual property has not been yet registered. However, you move over here. Um, well, let's first look at this. So we're going to divide this. We have 164,500. We're going to divide that by 10. Okay? We're dividing that by 10. So what do we do? Well, we have a decimal here. Because here we actually have the tenths place, okay? And we can put a zero there. Okay, we have our decimal here. Well, we're dividing by 10. What does that mean? Well, we know that that means that this number, when it's divided by a power of 10, that the new number is going to be one-tenth of that quantity here. One-tenth of that. One-tenth of that suggests that it's going to be less. Therefore, my number should look smaller. Now, when you look at this, there's a two ways you can look at this. You can say, well, I could move my decimal one place to the left, and that would be true. That would be my new number. And you could say that when you divide by one power of 10, the decimal place moves one place to the left. 
okay? Therefore, making the number one-tenth the value of that. Now, we've done that, and that's successful. Or, we've already spoken that the digits would move. Therefore, see, if we're moving the decimal place this way, in essence, that's like saying if we moved, if you recall, in the lessons, they were kind of teaching you to move the digits one place to the right. It still turns out to be the same if we left that decimal place there. I'm not trying to confuse you. I know you're looking at this going, Mr. War, I'm so confused now. But it's the same thing. Either decide to move the decimal one place to the left, which is probably the easiest way that makes the most sense, or you can simply move the digits all one place over. Either way, what do we get as our answer? If this is the new decimal place, we've divided by 10, we have 16,450 now. Look, the number changed. We lost one of the zeros, which is literally, look what we have here, one zero, one power of 10. Therefore, it's almost like we took it away. That's really what we did. All right, so I'm good with that. But what's happening over here? Well, this might get a little bit tricky here. So let me... Let's do it this way. Let's put the, we have up to the thousands. Okay, I'm going to put the thousands. And I don't know how I can show that. Yeah, let's do the one. I like that. Would make more sense. Okay, since we are, we won't get confused with the letters. So that would mean the five would be here. Then we have the four here. We have the six here. Here's our decimal place since this is the tenths. And then this would be the ones place. And then this is going to be the tens, the hundreds, the thousands. And it looks like we can get up to the ten thousand, so we'll just put our little ten thousand. Okay, so now we'll put in the rest of the digits here. We have, let me see, uh, we have the, I put the four or five, okay. Wow, that's it. So way over here to the right. And there's a reason for that. So now if you look at this here, we have the number 1 and 645 thousandths. 1 and 645 thousandths. Okay, everything looks like it's matched up good. Okay. Now we're multiplying by a power of 10 again. Here we're dividing by a power of 10. Here we're multiplying by a power of 10. But we're going to be multiplying by 4 powers of 10. That means 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. That's what that raised to the fourth power means here, that the base is being multiplied by itself four times. Well, look at all our zeros there. That tells you right there that we're looking at 10,000. Look at how many more zeros we have. We have four zeros. Up here, we have four zeros. <laughs> I tell you, I am so good at this. No, just kidding. Okay, so, come on, Mr. War, stay focused. So I come back to my problem. I'm like, okay, what am I going to do? If dividing, I move the decimal to the left, then multiplying means the decimal is going to move to the right. Bingo, I knew you knew that. So basically what that means then, you have that same choice again here. What you could do, uh, you could, I'm not totally lost here. What you could do is you could um, basically move the decimal, okay, to the right, or you could say the digits are going to move to the left. Remember how the digits move to the right over here? Now the digits are moving to the right. I'm going to show you with just a digit move. Let me get a different color so it might make more sense. Okay, it's a power of 10. But this, each, um, each place value is by a power of 10. So in this case, so that 1 needs to move 4 powers of 10. That means 1, 2, 3, 4. It's going to move all the way to the thousands place. Okay? So that means we're going to have the 1 here. And now, um, when we come over here, um, let me see here. Oh, I'm sorry, not the thousands place, ten thousands. I'm looking at the TH. I apologize. Ten thousands place. And now the six, that's going to come way over here. And then the four is going to come over here. You see what's happening here. And the five is going to come over here. Okay? So now we have our six here. We have our four here. We have our five here. Now, because we have ten thousand. And then this is 1,000, you know, we put in our, our, this is called a period, even though it looks like a comma. It's crazy, but that's called a period. So that we put in our thousands, and then we put our four or five, but we can't leave nothing there. We have to put a zero there. And there you go. We're getting the same result, my friends. Oh, I love when things work out. So now if the decimal had moved, okay, if the decimal had moved, basically, 
what would have happened? We'd have to move it four times. One, two, three, and that's here. Four. You can see this. What's happening? The six would have been on this side. The four would have been on this side. The five would have been on this side. And then we had one extra zero because we did four of those little loop-de-loops. One, two, three. Or at least what I call loop-de-loops. I just like the way that sounds. So now we have 16,450. Voila. So it's the same. So now the question is, to get credit for this problem, it says use a place value, Matt. That's what we did. N words. Okay, I try to talk through this a little bit with you guys to explain why this is true. So why is this true? Why do they have the same result? Well, there's a lot of different ways you could say that. I mean, first thing I think of is, well, right, the problem we just did. When I multiplied, you know, the digits actually ended up moving, okay, four places, okay, to, to, the, to the left, okay, uh, because, you know, they got larger. By multiplying by a power of 10, it means the number has to increase, whereas it, when they're dividing, okay, it decreases. So my explanation would be, well, since this number was being multiplied by four powers of 10, by the way, and I never did get my last 10 in there, okay, then that means that the number would have to increase because the digits were actually moving to the left, or when I move my decimal to the right, the number gets larger, and that's always true. I honestly have to say it probably makes more sense if you look at it this way, because the digit moves four times and then you throw in your zero. And that's the easiest way to remember that. But it is important to remember that this is the base 10 system. And what it's basically saying is we'll be multiplying by a power of 10. The number is going to increase 10 times, 10 times greater, multiplied by 10. That all means the same thing. So let me go ahead and go to the, the page. So it does say to explain why, so we have to put this into words. So let me go ahead and put this into words. And um, and I would probably start off by saying that basically um, the easiest way is to, to write it like the simple. So let's just take the simple here and just say, well, basically first thing here. Okay, let's do the division. So when I divided... Okay, so when I divided, basically, um, I'm going to say two ways. The digits, okay, the digits moved to the right. Okay, or in essence, too, you could say the decimal moved to the left. Okay, it's just the opposite. It moved to the left. I'm not trying to confuse you by that, but you know it's important that you understand that's what happened. So if we have that, see, if the decimal is moving to the left, the number's getting smaller. See, you're having to put all these, I put the right amount in, yes, two zeros in the front. Okay, the number just got smaller. It's not even one hole anymore. There's nothing here. It used to have one in the hole, now it does not. But... If you don't move that decimal, then that would mean that the digits move to the right because they're on this side now of the decimal. That's all that means, okay? And that's important. Um, and it moved that way because, well, because it, because the number got smaller, okay? Because the number got smaller. Okay, this tablet's working really well today. I don't know why. Then, so we're going to basically do the opposite, so when, right when I said that, <laughs> it did that. No! Okay, <laughs> when I multiplied, okay, when I multiplied, the digits moved to the left. You saw that picture. And again, this means that the decimal move to the right if you do it that way move to the right now you don't have to write both both things down here i want you to understand if you just put when i multiply the digits move to the left that's correct and if you say well when i multiply the decimal move to the right that's correct 
you know, you choose one or the other. I'm putting it in parentheses so that you understand that both ways are correct. And obviously because the number increase. And I made that kind of sloppy there at the end. And I also apologize for that. So basically, you can see how that was the case. Well, we now we've explained we explain the power of 10. If you go into more detail, even better. It does say to use a place value, Matt. Does he have to use words to explain? Okay. And so with all this on here, I think we reached our goal, my friends. Woohoo! Yay. Now, I was just going to do the little Tigger sound. Woohoo! Sound like Tigger. Anyway, you have a code word. Make sure it's entered properly if you wish to re receive credit for this video. Now, until. End of module one, assessment, review, part two. I will see you soon, all right? Adios.